this anniversary, 30th year of pain and suffering for me and my family. Well, one of the most important things people must, must, must realize by now is that it's torn my family apart. My two children and my grandchildren is now living in, in, in England because they're born here. I had to then make the decision of the fact that I've lost the, the, the whole of my family, whether I stay here or, or go back to where I came from. The fact that we actually decided that we were going to bury Stephen in, in the Jamaica because of vandalism was one of the main things that caused me to leave this country. And I feel more at home when I'm in Jamaica. And also the fact that he's buried there, I can go and see him and look after his, his grave. So that's one of the... I, I, I think people didn't even realize that Stephen had said at one stage that when he fully, fully qualified as a as an architect, he was going to go and live in Jamaica as well. So although he didn't manage to do it himself, we we've, we've managed to take him back. He had a very bright future ahead of him as well. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? And as a family, what you were looking forward to at that time? When Stephen decided what he wanted to become, he decided he wanted to be an architect. My dreams was to be an architect, and I then said to myself, well, I'm sure Stephen is going to be able to produce the goods to be an architect and looking forward to seeing some of his, the building that maybe he decide design and, and build all over the country. Unfortunately for me and my family, that didn't happen. The, the memories of my son growing up, remember, you know, this is my first child. The memories that I have of Stephen will never go away. You know, I, when, when Stephen was born, in those days, there used to be cut debts, a lot of cut debts. When Stephen came out of hospital and came home, the first night when he was in that cut, I don't think I slept that night. I was getting up every minute to make sure and listen to make sure that he was breathing. <laughs> so you never forget those men? I'll never forget them, man. Never. What do you think was so different about your family's approach and about the rest of Britain as well, finally looking in the mirror? What, what made it different? I think um, the, the, the fact that I'm a determined, determined P person, and I used to say to them, I'm not taking no for an answer. I'm going to find ways to do what I need to do and to get justice for my, my son. Um, if that was a black person who had gone out there and murdered somebody within weeks, you would have found out who they are. And so my son is not going to go. The, the killing of my son is not going to go like the way you think it's going to go. It's going to go the way like I'm going to fight tooth and nail to get some kind of justice, not just if it, the justice I have, keep saying to people that I've got so far is some justice. And when I say some justice, that means I want the whole justice. And what does the whole justice look like? The whole justice is to get all the other people that were involved in my son's murder to go and spend time in prison for what they've done. Because if that was my son who had gone out there and killed somebody, nobody would be talking about some justice. We're talking about justice. How do you feel that this idea of the police being institutionally racist still exists 30 years on? I'm, I'm disappointed, you know, I, I've said this more than once. When the inquiry was being kept, most of the inquiry was done in, in London first. And then we started going over to Birmingham, Manchester, all these other different cities. And to take the, the, the inquiry into those different communities, for people of those communities to understand some of the things that's happening in London. I am so disappointed that how oh, many 19 years ago, or so, they were given a plan to try and make the force better, and they completely ignore it. That somebody else had to take it on and come back with the same things that we said 19 years ago. And I'm just saying, it was a waste of time and money for you to give somebody something to make them better, and they ignored it so that we are still facing the same kind of situation 2,000 years, 2020, 23, we're still facing the same kind of attitude of these people who are supposed to be protecting the, the public. And I've made it plain to people, if something happened to me 
tomorrow morning or even now, who do I call? And if I had to deal with the police, I wouldn't be calling the Metropolitan Police because I know I wouldn't get the satisfaction of them treating me the way they're supposed to. When I look and see that officers who are supposed to be looking after a family, going into a park, taking photographs of two dead people and sending it as a joke all over the place, I can't believe these people are human beings. There's been lots of conversations about um, wanting your son's killers to eventually confess. Why is it important that they do confess? For me, if you done something as dreadful as a murder, and, and some people, there may be still some people thinking that they maybe didn't get the right people. For me, if that person been convicted and sent to prison, and is now wanting to come back and join the society, they should be able to say whether or not they were the person who actually did the crime before they were let out on to, into the community. I don't have a doubt that they actually did it, but I want them to confess to the world because a lot, there may be lots of people who still think that they weren't the people. And when it comes then to those parole hearings, do you think that a confession should be a part of that? I don't know whether or not I'm going to be allowed to go to the, 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 the parole hearing or at one stage they were saying that maybe I'll have to write some kind of something towards it. I don't know that. I haven't spoken to my solicitor about that. But for me, I think if I don't have to write something, then I should be able to be present to, to hear some of the questions that they're going to be asked. And if I'm, if I'm able to say to whosoever is going to ask the question, ask them what they're going to ask, and if it's possible for me to put a question in, then I'll do that. And what would you like to say or to ask them? Stephen is buried in Jamaica. He's dead. He's never going to be able to come out of that coffin and where he's in. These people have served 14 years or whatsoever it is out of my son was 18 years old, he'd be 40 something now. I think it would be really courte courteous for them, for me to ask whosoever has been sent to prison, did you actually kill my son? I want you to say, yes, I killed Stephen Lawrence, to make me feel satisfied that we at least got some of the people, because we know there's still three, four or something still walking around, would never be prosecuted because they, they met at the, the good idea of closing the case, that in case somebody who maybe know more about the case after so many years decide that, you know, I've kept the secret for so long, now I need to put it out for them to solve this case and find the rest of the people who actually killed my son. It's frustrating because when you look at um, the destruction that they've caused, especially for me and for me to lose my family, that I have to move away from here, away from the rest of my family, and go and live somewhere else because I can't stand the idea of being here. It's devastating. I, won't, I would never forgive the police as long as, as they can't accept what they're doing is wrong. Because if you don't accept it, it's not going to change. You're going to be the same, and 20 odd years later, for somebody else to come along and say the same thing, that shows you that they have no intention of changing their behavior. You know, in the, in the, in the early days when I came to this country in the 1960s, if I was out on the street looking for somewhere to go, like an address in, on a road or something, and I saw an officer or I saw a police station, I'd go and ask. In those days, you'd get an answer and you'd get a direction. No, I wouldn't ask them for nothing. I um, wasn't even born when your son was killed. However, I grew up my entire life knowing who your son was and understanding the change that had been created as a result of his death. I'm interested to see what you think about that and whether or not you believe that there is a difference between your generation's experience of police and Britain as a whole compared to what mine might have been? Well, uh, um, in, a, in a way, it, 
what you just said sometimes made me feel good to know that I'm able to talk to the younger generation and tell them certain things about the way their peers gave towards us in the early days and for them to understand that it was wrong and for, the, for them to do things different from the way some of their parents were doing it. I'm, I'm, I'm feel grateful for that. The only thing that I'm not too happy about is that it had to take the death of my son for anything like that to happen.